Wanted to start on a tweet that I saw from Mike Floria. <clears throat> Thought he made a really great point that I think encapsulates a lot of points that I've been making this offseason. As we know, as Bills fans, the expectations that have been levied upon the Bills this season are unlike any we have ever seen. The expectations are through the moon, sky high. We've never seen anything quite like it. And it does take some getting used to, something I don't think we are quite used to yet this year, even though last year, right, the Bills were still, of course, contenders, potentially 13 seconds away from getting into the Super Bowl. Going into the year, the hype wasn't exactly what it is this year. After the offseason the Bills had, after the additions they made, after how they looked in the playoffs a season ago, the hype train is real and everybody's on it. Not just Bills Mafia, but everybody. And this is something we're not accustomed to. And I think people who are not part of the fan base do a good job of shining light on it better than we can because we, of course, have an inherent bias. And I've had this conversation with you guys before. It's nice to take a step back and look at it from the other perspective because sometimes that is a good, healthy way to approach going into this season. Because if we go into it Super Bowl or bust, which is exactly how we feel, right? There's only one way to go out of the season feeling satisfied. And when you break down is, you know, the math essentially as to how hard that is to do, it blows your mind. Then again, though, we have no reason not to believe it. The Bills are the favorite. The Bills should be the favorite. And that's why I think this upcoming game Thursday night means so much, not only as far as one game is concerned, but as far as the grand scheme of the entirety of the season is concerned as far as the grand scheme of the expectations that are currently on the Bills' shoulders. Mike Florio tweeted this out uh, yesterday. So Chris Morrison put out a statistic that is truly mind-boggling when you break it down, and that's kind of what I was just getting at. Chris Morrison said that recently he saw on a site the Bills had the best percentage of winning the Super Bowl at 6.1%. He goes, not great at math, but it meant the Bills had a 93.9% chance of not winning the Super Bowl. And his whole point was the Bills are potentially the best team in the league. They deserve to be the Super Bowl favorite, but that's the NFL for you. That's what makes this league so great. You can be the Super Bowl favorite and still have a 94% chance of not winning the whole thing. And Mike Florio goes on, to quote to it, and he says, this underscores a point we've been making. The expectations for the Bills are ridiculously high. It seems like an unfair amount of pressure, and it's fair to wonder whether it will get to them. And I think that that's an absolutely fair point. That's all Mike Florio is saying right there, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies are so bad, so bear with me tonight. If I, if I sound a little raspier than usual, I mean, I know, my, I know it sounds like I'm ripping down a car in the day as is, hence the smoke break. But I got some allergy situations going heavy right now. So pardon me if I got to get a little sniffle in. I got to get a little <clears throat> going in. I'm still revved up, ready to rock. Don't you worry. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Mike Florio, though, his point in general is saying, because I listen to pro football talk every day. We, I've told you this before. And his whole point here is every time that they tend to talk about the Bills on the show, they're always praising them. And how could you not? Everybody is. But they are making a valid point in saying that the expectations for the Bills are insane. And it's kind of refreshing to hear it from him outside of somebody from the Bills fan base, because I think that we already have those expectations. But when somebody from the outside is also confirming that these expectations are truly immeasurably high, it really puts into perspective just how much is bearing on the shoulders of the Bills as they head into this season. And how much more pressure could you possibly add to the mix than opening up the season against the Rams? And not just opening up your season, opening up the entirety of the 2022 NFL season against the reigning champs in the newest and most prominent stadium in the NFL on standard cable in front of probably what will be the biggest audience as far as viewership is concerned until the playoffs or the Super Bowl hits. The pressure's immense. 
And that to me is why this game means so much. The Bills go into this game on Thursday, not needing to win it just to be able to improve to 1-0 and and get the wheels turning. But I think this does a world of either good or bad for them as far as confidence is concerned moving towards the season as the season continues to move on. The last time that we saw the starting unit for the Buffalo Bills on a regulation field was that 13-second game. And I, of course, don't believe that this team is still dwelling on that, but that is the last time that they were out on the field. And ever since we've seen them out on the field, you would have never thought that they lost that game based on how everybody's been talking about them. You would have never thought the Bills lost that game. And we talked about this just a week ago or so when I was talking about Josh Allen and his ascendance into superstardom. You know when it happened. It happened after the Patriots game and then was doubled down after the Chiefs game. Had you not watched that Chiefs game and you just went and looked at what everybody was saying about Josh Allen afterwards, you would have thought that he won the game for him. And of course, he did. The defense let him down. But after that game, you would have thought the Bills had won it all. But they didn't. The last time we saw them out on the field was a heartbreaker. But ever since then, from this moment back until then, it has been nothing but a hype train going light speed right into the season. And it's going to come down to two different ways that that train can go come Thursday night. And I think that that's why that ga- this game coming up means so much more than a standard opening game. And that, to me, of course, is why I'm more excited than I have ever been. Because I truly think that this means so much more than just a week one opener for the Buffalo Bills. Now, when I say this, when I talk about the pressure, when I talk about how much this game means, you could shoot it down. Of course, you could say it's just a game. It might not matter. And you might be right. Absolutely. But in my opinion, they don't even need to win this game Thursday to prove to everybody that the expectations that are expected of them coming into this season are valid. And I think as long as they can go out Thursday and prove to themselves that they are who they have convinced everybody to be, who they have convinced themselves that they are, I think that's going to go a long way. And that might not even that might not even require a win. Hence the Bills Chiefs game last year in the playoffs. The Bills just got to come out and show that they are truly as good as they seem on paper, as we've been told, as we've seen with our own eyes. And as we've seen based on what we can expect from what we've already seen with the additions that have already been put in place. If they win this game, I think we have every reason to not only believe what we've already confirmed to ourselves this offseason, but we have every reason to believe that as we go forward into this season, we can meet those immeasurable expectations, as Chris Mortensen pointed out. Because you look around this league, everybody's got a chance to win the Super Bowl. And even though the Bills is only 6.3% or whatever it is, it's still higher than anybody else's. And if I think if they go out Thursday in the biggest crowd that they've played against in a regular season game, as far as national broadcast audience is concerned, if they go out and they prove to the world, hey, those bills you've been hearing about, you better quit having any doubt because there's still people who have a doubt. And that's fine. Because unfortunately, we have given people slivers to have their doubts when it comes to the last second plays, when it comes to facing the Chiefs, when it comes to potentially the big game, quote unquote. We've given people those reasons. But if you go out and you smack the Rams in the mouth or you play a barn burner style game with them, there isn't going to be a single question the next day. However, if you go out and lay an egg, because let's be real here, last year, the Bills, as the season went on, is when we started to realize who they were, who they could be. And then when the playoffs started, that's when the exclamation point was put on that. But let's not forget what the Bills went out and did against a very mediocre, in my opinion, Pittsburgh Steelers team week one at home just a season ago. They laid an egg. Josh Allen didn't show up. 
the defense, they played fine, but ultimately not enough to win the game. And the special teams was all over the place. That game in particular wound up being decided on a block punt. That game to me, the exact opposite ha- of that has to happen this coming Thursday. Win or lose. If you lose to the Rams in a fashion that you lose to the Chiefs, I'm going to be fine with that. Now, I'm not gearing up for a letdown here. Don't, don't buy into that. Don't twist my words. I'm just talking about what I think the expectations are for the Bills currently and how they will be perceived come Thursday. The point I'm making is a win doesn't necessarily need to be gotten in order to prove that. However, a win in general will really, really emphasize these expectations that everybody at this point is currently aware of and that everybody knows is a big weight on the shoulders of these Buffalo Bills. So it seems. Of course, we'll never really know. And the way Josh Allen is, of course, the way Sean McDermott carries himself, the way this team carries himself in general, you'd never know if pressure got to them or not. But you'd have to imagine out of any team going into this season, who would have the most pressure? It's the Buffalo Bills. And they don't have to admit it. They never will. And they don't even have to buy into it. And I think a lot of times when we talk about pressure, it's narratives that us fans make up. It's narratives that the media makes up. But if you really wanted to get down to brass tacks and talk about pressure going into a season, get down and think about who's got more pressure. The Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen, right? He's still that fringe guy. Still that fringe guy, according to the NFL, according to the players, just a couple weeks ago, last week rather, the NFL top 100, left out of the top 10. And I know I went into that in depth, and I know it's just a stupid list, and I know it means nothing, but that just goes to show you where the view is right now. And this is what I was talking about. There's still those sliver of doubts. Anybody with eyes knows Josh Allen's a top 10 NFL player, but he's still left out, right? He's still left out. Everybody knows Sean McDermott's one of the best coaches in the NFL. But he's oftentimes not categorized in that. Why? He drops two to Kansas City in the playoffs. He loses the late game to Houston in his first playoff appearance. All that pressure builds up on top of the fact that you go into the season as the Super Bowl favorites. So yes, maybe they don't admit it. They never will. And maybe they don't even think that it's real. And most probably don't. But when that term pressure comes up, if you want to categorize it, the only way you can do it as far as who has the most pressure, yes, it's the Buffalo Bills. And that is why I think this Thursday, with a win or an incredible performance, you erase the 13-second game immediately. That monkey's off the back. Frankly, that monkey should be off the back drive one. I think it's already off the back of the team, but I don't think us fans have that off the back yet. But how would you feel, you watching this right now, if the Bills go out Thursday night against the reigning champs and punch them right in the mouth? You going to be thinking about that 13 seconds anymore? I know I sure am not. Because all I'm going to be thinking about is what this team has currently, what they just displayed, and what that could potentially mean moving forward so that a 13-second situation is something we never have to worry about again. This Thursday night is everything. It's huge. And I know there's plenty of people out here who will watch this, who won't watch this, who have their opinions, and they say it's just a game. Every game's the same. The game against the Rams is the same as the game against the Jets. I disagree completely. And I think deep down you all, you all disagree with that sentiment too. Some games mean much more than others, even if they don't have a direct meaning. It's week one. The Bills could drop this one 48 to nothing. They could go 16 and one and then win every game in the playoffs and win the Super Bowl. Absolutely. But in my eyes, this game has a ton riding on it. A ton riding on it. And I think all it takes is a great performance and even more so a win to alleviate that pressure to get the monkey off the back of last season and really hit this season in full speed stride. Because this game's going to be a major litmus test. You've seen the schedule. I mean, you think this Rams game is tough. Yeah, sure, of course it is. It's probably the toughest game on their schedule, perhaps. If you don't think it's the toughest, easily one of the top four toughest games. But it gets no easier. This game's a huge litmus test. 
you got to host the Tennessee Titans a week following that, a team that you haven't been able to beat in a couple seasons. You've lost in heartbreaking fashion. A team who a season ago, you were the better team then. And you lose on a one-yard sneak that you can't get, and ultimately that could have wound up being the difference between the Bills having home field advantage in the playoffs or not. And then you take it off to Miami, where everybody wants to tell us that the Miami Dolphins are the new team, the new ascending team in the AFC East that we got to look out for. Look out, Buffalo. Here comes Tua and Tyreek Hill and the Miami Dolphins. That'll be the narrative. And here comes Lamar Jackson, the MVP, right? The team that the Bills have always had epic battles with. And then the Steelers. And then, of course, the Chiefs. It gets no easier. You make a statement Thursday night if you come out of the shoots and prove to everybody that the expectations that have been put on the Bills' shoulders are legit and they have been earned and they will most likely be lived up upon. If not for winning the Super Bowl, at least being shown that the thought that they can do it and that they should do it is there.